hello students the topic that today we will discuss is voice uh, voice describes the relationship between the verb that is the action word and subject and object of the given sentence it tells us whether the action is important or the doer is important or maybe the object is important for example 26 candidates were recruited here 26 candidate this object is highlighted that's why it is passive voice or tata consultancy recruited 26 students so tata consultancy this doer is highlighted over here so voice is something that talks about the relationship between or among verb of the given sentence subject of the given sentence and object of the given sentence so when we are going to talk about voice there are few things that we must remember that is subject object verb and the tense of the given sentence so unless and until we know all these four things we won't be able to uh, change active voice to passive voice or maybe passive voice to active voice so voice is something that talks about verb subject and object and their interrelationship so active voice is when when the subject is given importance and passive voice is when when the object is given importance sometimes it can also be said that when the verb changes according to the number of subject and the tense of the given sentence that is active voice when the verb changes according to the object that is the number of the object and the tense of the given sentence it becomes passive voice so let us see what the things that we need to do before we change active voice to passive voice or maybe passive voice to active voice things to know before changing the voice subject object verb and tense subject is the doer the actor who acts who performs the action and object is the word on which the action is done and verb is both auxiliary verb as well as action verb we have already discussed what exactly verb means and what are the different auxiliary verbs model uh, primary auxiliary verbs model auxiliary verbs and action words and the different six form of the action verb that we have already discussed and the tense tense means the sense of time that is present past future we have already discussed these things so unless and until we know all these four things we won't be able to change active voice to passive voice or maybe passive voice to active voice. So let's see these things one by one. Subject is the doer, the actor. If you see these three examples, you will realize that David, she and a dog. These three are the subjects. When we know the subject, sometimes there are some sentences like imperative sentences. There is no, apparently there is no subject. But in imperative sentence you the second person is always taken into consideration as a subject but apparently we don't write it for example go and close the window here the listener that is you go and close the window but unless if there is no imperative sentence rest of the sentence it may be interrogative it may be exclamatory we have the subject and we should be in the position to identify the subject when we identify the subjects make sure that if the subject is singular or plural because that will decide which auxiliary verb we need to use according to the tense of the given sentence. Then comes object. As I said, object is the word on which the action is done. For example, I am delivering a talk. So, talk is the word on which the action of delivering is done. So, talk is the object. Object can be direct object. It can also be indirect object. And when there are two objects in a given sentence, we can change the voice of that particular sentence by two methods. Sometimes we can put the direct object initially and make the changes accordingly or sometimes we can take the indirect object initially and make the changes accordingly. Or sometimes it is the examiner who gives us the choice. He tells us or she tells us begin the sentence with this. For example, I gave 10 rupees to Aryan. In this case, 10 rupees and Aryan, these two objects are there. One is direct and another is indirect. So how do I identify direct object? You have to ask two questions. What and to whom? Answer to the question what is direct object and answer to the question to whom is indirect object. For example, I gave 10 rupees to Aryan. 
what did I give to Aryan? 10 rupees. So 10 rupees becomes direct object. Whom did I give? 10 rupees? Aryan. So Aryan becomes indirect object. So in this case, we can change the voice by two ways. So C sings devotional songs. Again, when you identify the object, make sure that you understand whether it is singular or plural because that is going to help us in order to use correct auxiliary verb. It may be to be, it may be to do or it may be to have. So according to the tense and according to the number of the given object, we have to use auxiliary verbs. So please pay attention to the number of object. For example, cookies, plural, songs, plural. <clears throat> the next one is verb. When you identify the verb, you must be in the position to identify the auxiliary verb as well as the action verb. And when you identify auxiliary verb as well as action verb, you would be in the position to identify the tense of the given sentence. For example, David composed a nice poem. Composed is the auxiliary verb. She sings devotional song. Sings is the verb. A dog was eating. Was eating is the verb. Was is the auxiliary. Eating is the action word. Composed, sings, eating. These are action words. Was auxiliary verb. So please pay attention to this. Depending on this, you can get the tense. Sometimes you identify David composed. Past form of the verb. So simple past. Sings. S form of the verb, that's why simple present tense. Was eating, was to be past tense form, so past eating, ing form of the verb, so continuous, so it becomes past continuous tense. So please identify the tense also. Now let's see the changes. Active voice and passive voice, these two sentences are there and as a student, as an observer or as a listener of this particular video, you should be able to identify the different changes because these changes you are supposed to do when you are asked to change the voice of the given sentence. Sometimes they may not tell you which voice the sentence is in. So you should be in the position first of all to identify whether it is active voice or passive voice and accordingly make the changes. If it is active voice, sometimes it is easy to make it passive. But if the sentence is already in passive voice, you have to go reverse. So, and this is little tough because this is what most of the time we learn that what happens when we change active to passive. But we fail to uh, recall what to do from passive to active. And that's why if you really want to work, please make sure that from passive voice you go for active voice. Reverse game. And that will give you a good sense of understanding of voice and if you can very easily change passive to active you are very good in voice so let's see david composed a nice poem early in the morning three things you should identify subject verb and object verb you should be able to under identify the tense also david composed a nice poem and rest of the words or the complement or rest of the words that are there in a sentence you can put them initially, finally or medially. That makes no difference because we are not going to make any changes in these words. We are going to make changes only in subject, verb and object. So let's see what, the, uh, what are the different changes. A nice poem was composed by David. Please pay attention to these changes. The, a nice poem, the position of this particular object is changed. We have taken it initially. Then we use was. Now, you should identify and understand this. This is very important and this is where most of the students make uh, uh, commit error. The error is they may not use, sometimes they may not use the auxiliary verb or sometimes they use it but they use it incorrectly. So why was? Reason is here. David composed. This is simple past. That's why to be is past tense form. But there are two past tense forms of to be. That is was and where. So why only was? The reason is here. Nice poem. This is singular. That is why I told you initially that you should be in the position to identify the number of subject as well as object. This object is in singular form. That's why was. Had there be poems, it would have been were. And past participle of the action word that is composed. Then we have used by as a preposition. We know the function of preposition. So by is put before the subject. Now the position of subject has been changed. David. You should identify this and rest of the things early in the morning. You can put it in initially also like early in the morning a nice poem was composed by David or a nice poem 
early in the morning was composed by David, you can put it anywhere. That makes no difference and we have not made any change in this particular complement of the sentence. Let's see another example to identify. She sings devotional songs. She is the subject, sings is the object, devotional songs is the sings verb, devotional songs is the object. Again it is in plural and the tense is simple present tense and that's why are devotional songs are sung by her. So please pay attention to this. Mostly the auxiliary verb. Let's see the changes. Uh, this is whatever I told you. Object has taken the place of subject. Many times I have heard students saying that object becomes subject or subject becomes subject. No. The role does not change. Only the position changes. The place changes. The auxiliary verb has been used as per the number, whether it is singular or plural, of the object and the tense. Are, because it was simple present tense, was, it was simple past. So please pay attention to this. Past participle form of the action word has been used. Though we are using past participle form of the verb in this particular voice, we are not changing the tense. We are simply changing the structure of the sentence. So make it a point. The tense is not changed. Preposition by has been used before the subject. So this is another change that, that's that has taken place. Nobody will ask you what are the different changes that take place from active to passive. But when you are actually expected to change the voice of the given sentence, you should know these rules. And when and how will you know these rules? When actually you will practice it hard. See, by just mugging up and by this rote learning, nothing is going to happen. So, things to take note of while changing the active to passive or passive to active. Identify subject, object, verb and tense of the given sentence as I said initially. Pay attention to the number, singular or plural, of object as well as subject. Make sure to use past participle form of the action verb. Yeah, this is a little thing that you must pay attention to. As I said, the subject can be a noun as well as pronoun and if the subject is personal pronoun like I, you, he, she, it, we then they are changed into objective case. So what are the objective case? I becomes me, we becomes us, you remains same, he becomes him, she becomes her, it becomes it, they becomes them. So this is how one good chart that I came to know from this particular website. They have given you all the tenses and the models if they are used in active voice and how they are used in passive voice. Whatever rules we I have discussed with you guys, you can apply those rules and get the things changed. Rest of the sentences like imperative, exclamatory and interrogative, how they are changed into voice, uh, passive voice, we will see in next video. Till then, happy learning.